All right. Welcome back to Delete Laws. I'm Brian from Here's the Deal. What laws do we want to delete? We want we only want to delete the evil, unjust, immoral, and cruel laws. That's all. No other laws do we want to delete. We just want to delete those. Don't you want to delete those too, Ann Zimmerman? Don't you want to delete those too, you city council members and all you people in the court at Vermilion County who are trying to lock up Craig Hendry for committing, not committing a crime? Don't you want, don't you want to eliminate all the unjust, cruel, immoral laws that keep a flex your freedoms in jail? And I know what Chili would do if he was operating his channel right now. He would be here to speak up for Craig Hendry and for flex your freedoms and for press with rancor. So keep them in your mind, guys. I, under this video, I have put in the description, the link to Craig Hendry's GoFundMe and to flex your freedoms, PayPal and to, uh, Chili's Chili. So if you want to support any one of those three, and if you've got press with rankers too, somebody put that in the chat room and I'll try to include that when the video gets done rendering. But you know, we got to, we got to understand people are losing their freedoms left and right. I'm not altogether. Well, I am pretty sure that the solution is not to continue putting a bandaid on an, a gaping wound where we're just hemorrhaging to death. We're hemorrhaging freedoms. Yeah. The tree of Liberty is being refreshed, but it's not by the blood of tyrants. It's by our blood. So I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you for supporting Chile. Thank you for supporting Craig Hendry. Thank you for supporting Flex Your Freedoms, Press With Ranker, and everybody out there who needs help. And, you know, hopefully this will be the start of something where we all can get together anytime one of us gets in trouble in an unjust manner, because we do want to delete unjust, cruel, and evil laws. I wanted to talk about this interaction right here between a Seattle Police Department employee, and we'll get to his name here in a second, and a bus driver for the Seattle transportation system. And the reason I wanted to do this is because we are constantly showing videos and making the assertion that some of the most fragile egoed individuals, some of the softest, most pitiful creatures among us happen to wear a uniform, a badge, a utility belt, and come with the authority of the state and say, they're law enforcement. We're here to serve and protect as they harass and collect from the rest of us. But this is just another example that just recently happened in Seattle. This is the write-up. We're going to read some of this article right here. And we're also going to play the video because I want to make a comment on not only the, the bus driver's reaction to this bad tyrant from the S Seattle Police Department, but also the actions or lack of actions coming from anybody on the bus to speak up for what they knew was right. Nobody stepped forward on behalf of the bus driver who was clearly in the right and the cop who was clearly in the wrong. Now, other than pointing back to something like the Milgram experiment where people freeze up when authorities around and they'll just do whatever the authority says. And even if the authority's in the wrong, they're not going to speak up against that other than that. And a large dose of cognitive dissonance. I don't know how else to explain this right here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, let me read some of this article right here that comes from the stranger in Seattle says the Office of Police Accountability, or OPA, has opened an investigation into Seattle Police Department Detective Anthony Belgard. And Belgard has a record. Stay with us on this. After he pulled over a King County Metro bus last Thursday for road rage, we're going to find out what he thinks, Anthony Belgard. We're going to think what see what Detective Anthony Belgard thinks is road rage and why he can justify making a threat, a law enforcement initiated threat to a bus driver who was just doing his job. And I don't mean that in a derogatory fashion either. A passenger on the bus filmed the heated interaction. We're going to watch that in a second between the bus driver and Belgard, during which Belgard suggested the driver could be arrested for obstruction. We got to get rid of this dragnet of obstruction and resisting arrest and interfering with official due. We got to get rid of that. If, 
if for no other reason than just to maybe redefine it, maybe specifically define it so that you know what obstruction is, you know what interference is, and you stay far away from it so that we can pe keep people out of rape cages. The driver said Belgard pulled over the bus after the driver honked at the officer of officers. There was two of them in the car, the patrol car, for cutting him off, according to King County Metro radio calls. Belgard drove an unmarked police car at the time. So the bus driver didn't even know, possibly, that who he was honking at was a police officer. And even if he did, who cares if the cop is in your way and you need to honk at him to get your get his attention, you would expect that he's not going to have such a fragile ego that he's going to come and use his law enforcement position to threaten you with, you know, possible jail time for just honking at him and getting his attention. The OPA complaint tracker has no details about the stop nor a list of which policies Belgard may have violated, but two videos on social media, we're going to watch those in a second, recorded radio chatter and information provided by a Metro employee familiar with the incident helped fill in some of the gaps about what happened before and after Belgard boarded the bus. And so we'll give you some background and then we're going to play the first clip and then we're going to play the second clip. Around midday on Thursday, March 28th, a rapid ride C bus heading to Chandler's Cove pulled out of a bus zone on 35th Avenue Southwest when a black Ford, that's the unmarked police vehicle, started to pull out in front of the bus. The bus driver honked at the car driver because that's why you have horns. So you can get other drivers' attention and say, hey, you're about to do something that's super dangerous and I don't want to run into you, so I got to get your attention. At which point the car driver, that's the cops, flashed his rear police lights. The bus driver continued on his route, but moments later, and that would be, the cop is going to interpret this as fleeing and eluding because he didn't pull over right then because he didn't know he had to. The bus driver continued on his route, but moments later, the cops pulled up behind the driver and activated their lights. The bus driver pulled over because he assumed the officers had their lights on to clear traffic and pass the bus. When the cop car, which the driver said was unmarked, did not pass the bus, the driver drove to his next stop at Southwest Avalon Way and Southwest Yancey Street. The cop followed the driver, pulled up behind him, and then boarded the bus. And that's where we come in at the first 30-second clip. Check this out. We got the lights and sirens on. How come you didn't pull over? It's like, I didn't know you wanted me to pull over. I mean, why would I have had to pull over? I didn't commit a traffic infraction. <clears throat> All right, so that was the first one. Now we're going to get to the second one. We're going to read some more of this. Uh, the media appears to show Belgard in front of the bus talking to the driver. In the video, the driver explains the moment where Belgard cut off the bus and the moment he pulled over to let the cop pass after they activated their lights. Belgard claims the bus driver ran from the cops. And that's what they'll do. First of all, hey, cop, you know the bus driver, you know that you know that the bus driver didn't do anything wrong. There's no reason for you to be in. Think about this when you're pulling over the bus driver. You're also interfering with the time and the right to travel of everybody who's taken that mode of transportation. Everybody on the bus was inconvenienced because a cop or a couple cops in an unmarked patrol car got their egos bruised because how dare you honk at a cop? Oh, I'll show I'll show you what I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm going to blow this truck and I'm going to show you who's boss. The second video, the bus drivers that said that he had the right to honk his horn to let Belgard know, hey, I'm here. So let's take a look at this second one right here. Now, the bus driver says it's on camera. Now, they have front-facing, rear-facing, and as far as I know, some of these some of these really uh, high-tech buses 
have 360 cameras all around and inside. So I haven't seen the release of the OPA footage, but I bet you anything, the bus driver is telling the truth because he knows he's being recorded. And the cop who's too drunk on his own authority and too ego bruised and too fragile and too internally damaged and unstable to realize, Hey, I, I need to, I need to back off here, but they get so involved in how they feel. They get so into their feelings and they get so drunk on their own power and their own authority. They can't stop. They literally cannot stop themselves. They know they're being recorded. They know what they're doing is happening in front of a, a you know, bus full of people right here, but they continue to do it because they can't stop. That's these are the kinds of people we're dealing with. These are the kinds of people that are being issued uniforms and badges and for God's sake, guns. These are the kinds of people that are told, hey, you got authority over the rest of the population. They can't back down. They can't back off. They can't swallow their pride. So I believe, I don't know about you guys, but I am taking the side of the bus driver right here because I think that we have such a track record and history of cops just absolutely lying and pulling rabbits out of hats that aren't there that, uh, you know, the, the likelihood that this cop is lying is off the charts. Are you guys saying that there's no sound on this video? Let's see. Oh, no. Oh, no. I thought there was sound. Holy cow. There was no sound. Share sound. Wow. No sound on there. There is, there is going to be sound now. I, I hate the fact that there is a switch to turn sound on and sound off. I'm not used to StreamYard. Not used to StreamYard. I apologize. I hate wasting anybody's time. Because All right. Hold on a second. We're going to go back over this. Doggone it. My God. When will I learn? Anybody who's calling me stupid, I don't disagree with you. Don't disagree. All right. Sound has been fine. How can that even be AMG? Okay. Let, before I go any further with my foot in my mouth, here's the sound. Can you hear this sound right here? The bus driver said, matter, matter of fact, I'm going to call my control center. Could you guys hear that? Put a one in the room if you can. Sorry, guys. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. How much can I drop the ball? Get over it, Brian. Get over it. Got it now. All right. Well, your, your host for this stream is a doofus. In the words of somebody else, he's a dunce cap. And that's me, Mr. Dunce cap. All right. So let me rewind this one right here. Doggone it. All right. So here's officer bruised ego. My apologies. My apologies. Yeah. The volume is low on the original video right here. I cannot get the video to go any higher on this one or this one. So here we go. Okay, I understand that. Okay, can I explain? And you just, you just ran from us. What are you talking about? Run from? You just ran from us. When you don't pull over right away, I don't care how unsafe it is. I don't care if you have to pull into a lane where there's another car. You pull over when we activate our lights and sirens, buddy. That's how things work around these parts here in Seattle. I mean, they will put felony eluding on your record at the drop of a hat. And if you don't have, this is why you always record police. If you don't have it on recording, they will make that stick because they will believe a lying police officer over you and I any day of the week because they're in a big club and you ain't. Our lights and sirens are on. I pulled over to let and you then, pass. And you didn't pass. I was so pulling I you over. over. So I moved forward to my zone. 
All right. So he, the, the bus driver goes, Hey, I pulled over and I thought you were going to pass, but you didn't pass. So I kept on going. So here's, here's part two. God, oh my God. I just an an adult man talking to another adult man like he's a child always, always runs all over me. I can't even stand it. It would be so hard to keep your composure when another man, it's like, you're looking at him coming up to you like he's an alien. Who do you, wait, who do you think you are? Clown suits and badges don't grant extra rights, buddy. I don't care what turnip truck you fell off of, but I ain't believing that BS. Yeah, you better get another driver up here because you're not going to continue driving, says me. Like anybody's got, nobody should have the ring of power. Nobody should have... Yes, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely, but we like we've always said on my channel and this channel, power has this tendency to attract like a magnet those who are already corruptible. The you and I don't want the ring of power. We don't want to exercise control and unbridled authority over other people because we recognize that we don't want that for ourselves. So we follow the golden rule. It's not so with these highly immoral individuals who do want the ring of power. Hey, you're not going to be driving. Better get another driver up here because, you know, I'm considering on throwing you into a rape cage because you obstructed. And now I'm considering the fact that you may be eluding. Eluding. Maybe right now you're obstructing. Because I'm stopping you for what? For the road rage. There was no road rage. What do you mean there was no road rage? Show me. Show me a snapshot that says, I'm going to stop you. Show me the wall. He could. This cop is so sensitive. He's so delicate. He's so light. He's so fragile that he considers somebody honking at him when it sounds like the cop is the one who made the traffic mistake when he considers that road rage. And then to have the authority to back up, Hey, if I find, if I find you guilty because of my feelings that you committed road rage, you're out of here, buddy. going to put the silver bracelets on you and everything. Yeah, he should be sorry. And why, why, oh, why isn't one single, thank God this person is actually recording it because if the, the bus cameras fail, at least we have a, another recording with some audio, but why doesn't somebody stand up who has witnessed what was going on and call the cop on his BS. And why doesn't at least 50% of the people on this bus stand up in opposition to what this cop is saying and object to it and stand alongside this guy. And like I said earlier, I can only attribute it to the Milgram experiment where people absolutely get paralyzed when they see an authority figure enter their purview. And all of a sudden, they take the submissive back seat. Oh God, you should be the driver of this vehicle. You should be the one who's in control with the, uh, the uh, direction and destiny of my own life. I'm not going to question you officer. You must be right. If you say it's road rage, you, as soon as he said road rage, everybody on that bus should have stood up and said, what the hell are you talking about? Are you doing, dr somebody give this guy a drug test, give the Seattle police officer a drug test because there wasn't any road rage. And this, this bus driver was trying to safely navigate this bus on the public roadway in response to your flipping on the blue lights because you got your stupid ego bruised. You moron.
but nobody does that. And it's pretty discouraging and it's pretty disheartening. listen 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 so the bus driver told his dispatcher that this cop threatened to arrest him for uh you know road rage and obstructing and the cop says i never said i never threatened to arrest you yes he did and now the person with the camera is gonna voice some kind of objection to that i'm gonna go i'm gonna play it back so you can hear it Listen, the, the people on the bus know that cop just lied. It's all on camera. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I might take you to jail for obstruction. Did you hear that? The lady said, I'm going to take you to jail for obstruction. And you're saying, I never said I was going to arrest you for obstructing. Lie. Cops lie. Cameras don't. Always record the police now apparently this anthony belgard detective anthony belgard has a history we're going to take a look at that so that was that was video one and video two are you going to take me to jail the driver asked maybe right now you're obstructing so he's considering taking him to jail, which is what? It's the threat of taking somebody to jail. Radio calls between the driver and his supervisor capture a supervisor telling the driver to give the officer any information he requested and a supervisor would arrive at the scene shortly. When the supervisors arrive on the scene, they spoke with the two SPD officers and the bus driver. A Metro employee familiar with the situation told the strang stranger, I think I, earlier I called it the strangler, that they had no details on what Bellgard and his partner told supervisors, but the driver recounted more or less the same thing that he said over the radio and on the video. One of the supervisors returned to the bus driver after speaking with SPD and talked to him about apologizing to the officer. The driver refused, arguing that it wasn't my fault. They were at fault. Never, ever apologize for doing the right thing. Never, ever apologize for saying the right thing. And yeah, there's a specific reason I'm saying that. Never get yourself into a position where you have to, you feel like you have to back down and, um, you know, humble yourself in front of a tyrant. Compromise with tyrants never works in your favor. Apologizing to tyrants never works in your favor. As a matter of fact, they want to see you grovel. And they want to see you at their feet and they want to see you apologizing because they're power hungry and they're psychopathic. Only a psychopath would want to see another human groveling at their feet. Do you want, do you want somebody profusely apologizing to you when they don't think in their mind they did anything wrong? No, absolutely. You do not. It's, it's a mental illness for somebody to expect an apology when the person who's apologizing didn't do anything wrong. It's, it's being disingenuous. Supervisor then relieved the driver of duty for the day. That sucks. Wonder if he got, he probably got relieved of pay because if you're a police officer, you get paid administrative leave and you get paid for the thing that you did wrong. This, in this case, the bus driver didn't even do anything wrong and he got relieved of his duty for the day, which means he doesn't have, uh, he only gets a partial paycheck for that day because of the officer. Now, what should happen here to make things right is the officer should pay. The remainder of whatever that uh, that that paid that got that bus driver got gypped out of. But you think that's going to happen? I doubt it. Metro spokesperson Al Sanders said the agency knew about the video and confirmed its veracity. Officers made no arrests and Metro bus operations planned to look into the matter and would speak with the driver as well as passengers, Sanders said. And that bus that that transportation company should not make that driver apologize. There's nothing for that driver to apologize for in my estimation with the limited information that I have right now. 
SPD confirmed that a traffic stop occurred and provided an incident number, but they gave no further details about the stop. Why? Because they felt they knew, or at least I think they knew, that their fellow Thin Blue Line badge member actually was the one who instigated an unlawful stop and issued immoral threats. I'm going to cage you. I'm going to tie you up and throw you in my basement. If you don't apologize to me. The person who posted the video of the interaction included a caption that said, I was one of two dozen people on this bus ride. This AM, the driver was completely in the right and the officer had his ego bruised. Isn't it a sad state of affair affairs when regular boobus Americanus who's been indoctrinated by the 15,000 hour public fool indoctrination program and fake stream CIA infiltrated operation mockingbird MK ultra media can see right through all the BS that that officer. Absolutely. That is, that's what's what the problem is. His fragile little ego got damaged. No law in Washington bans road rage specifically, though some laws do pr prohibit aggressive driving. Honking a horn to alert someone you might hit them, as the driver said he did, does not appear to be illegal under Washington law. Of course it wouldn't be. Whether or not the driver violated any laws, he may still face consequences for Metro. He better not. He better not. I wonder if it, can somebody in the room find a number for office of, let's see, not office of a public counter. It, it's King County Metro bus in Seattle, Washington. King County Metro bus in Seattle, Washington. If we can find the number on that, we need to, there, there needs to be a lot of people that speak up on behalf of this driver. Metro rules and procedures tell drivers to cooperate with law enforcement. Co that, that is, co how about cooperate with law enforcement only when they're right about what they're doing? Cooperate with law enforcement as long as it's a lawful order. Cooperate with law enforcement as long as what they're doing is in accordance with and in line with the golden rule. Don't cooperate with one who's trying to uh, foist unjust laws. When injustice becomes, you know, normal, when, when injustice becomes, you know, ratified, when injustice becomes codified into law, then probably resistance becomes duty. I, I would just think that, you know. Special Victims Unit Detective Belgard, special victim. He's why is he special? Is he a special victim, or is he creating special victims? Special Victims Unit Detective Belgard may also face consequences depending on what the OPA finds in its investigation. Don't worry, we'll investigate ourselves. We'll get back to you. The OPA has investigated Belgard before, before, including a 2015. Start over. The OPA has investigated Belgard before, including in 2015, after a Port Orchard city prosecutor charged him with fourth degree assault for his involvement in the beating of a man at a bar. Huh. Wonder if the man was handcuffed. That sounds about like Belgard speed. I don't know if he was or not. I'm just speculating. I have no idea. Or do I have an idea? The prosecutor eventually dismissed the charges in exchange for Belgard paying the victim compensation. The OPA recommended no discipline in that case due to the fact that the investigation went past the Seattle Police Union's negotiated 180-day time limit for OPA cases. Hey, he, he went way beyond the statute of limitations here. I don't think we need to investigate Belgard anymore. He's one of our own. He's, I mean, come on. He's a fellow Elks Lodge member. He belongs to my Freemasonry club. The OPA did recommend discipline against, against Belgard in 2016 after he and two other officers shot at Cornelius Morris, an unarmed black man. Why am I not surprised? The police chief, Kathleen O'Toole, O'Toole, reversed the OPA's disciplinary recommendation in that case. <laughs> So what we got here, so what we got here is not to tell you to communicate. What we got here is preferential treatment of a guy who probably shouldn't be on the police force. Government is not eloquence. It is not reason. It is force and like fire. You know the rest. So you got Belgard here who's got a history of doing bad things to innocent people. And now he's doing it again because he got his feelings hurt because a bus driver 
and the what what is it called again we'll just go back over this if anybody can come up with that maybe we can look at it here let's see king county metro bus let's see if we can just look it up i don't mind bus um and that's seattle contact number is this right oh, it's called, okay it's called king county washington plan your trip this may be it this may be it so what we got here is 206 this is a public number by the way 206-553-3000 is the king county washington bus terminal number Appreciate you guys being here. Yeah, I'm Brian from Here's the Deal, just stepping in for Delete Laws so we can keep this channel going somehow, some way. And if you missed it, I did a live stream on my channel, Here's the Deal, because this guy needs some help. This is Craig Hendry from the YouTube channel. They used to be called CH and Tie Audits. Now it's called Hendry. He's basically being railroaded. And, um, you know, he's up against a potential 1300 day. Let's think about it. 1300 days in jail for committing no crime, leaving no victim, stealing no property, harming no one, threatening no one, damaging no property, and not refusing to pay for it just because he decided to exercise his rights. Flex Your Freedoms is in jail for exercising his rights. I don't I don't know what the overall and absolute solution to this problem is. But when you've got a guy who's committed no crime facing 1,300 days in jail, and you got another guy, Chile De Castro, in jail right now for having committed no crime because there was no law, therefore there was no lawful order, therefore there was no resisting a lawful arrest, and then you got a judge, hey, Ann, I'm still speaking to you. Come on, come on, Ann. Come to your senses. If you were, if you were willing to put this innocent person in jail, how many other innocent people have you put in jail? I always ask myself the question, if a, an officer like Belgard did what he did on camera in front of the world, how many other people has he done this to? How many people will he continue to do this to? Because this, these aren't isolated incidents. It's not like, oh, I just messed up. No, you didn't mess up. You made the conscious effort to get offended, to use your authority and use police equipment, taxpayer funded equipment and your authority to pull this driver over and hinder a whole lot of people on the bus because you didn't like the fact that somebody honked at you for making an, a traffic mistake. Where if somebody else did the exact same thing, not only would you honk the, at them, you would light them up, you would pull them over, and you would economically terrorize them through unconstitutional traffic laws. I mean, when is it going to stop? When is it going to stop? I do not know. I do not know when it will stop. But I do know that we need to support Chile and we need to support Flex Your Freedoms and we need to support Hendry and Press With Ranker. I don't have, if anybody has Press With Ranker's PayPal or GoFundMe or whatever, can you please put that in the chat and I will, I will put it up on the screen or I'll open a tab so we can take a look at that. But yeah, if you guys want to take a look at, uh, you know, call King County and tell them that you're responding to this video that you saw. I'm going to put the TikTok video right here in the comment section. Let's see what you guys are saying. That's pretty much all I have. Uh, if you guys want to hang out for a little bit and me read some comments and let's do a little interacting, maybe we can get, um, I don't know, maybe I can, hey, you know what? I'm on StreamYard. So maybe I can send an invitation link and maybe have one or two people come on board and we could, but, but here's what I want to do. I don't, I don't want to just shoot the breeze. I want to talk about things that are substantive. Okay. I don't want to waste anybody's time. I'm not here so that you can just, I don't want you to just, just hear my voice. If I don't have a message and I got nothing to say, I'm not going live. I'm not here to not, I'm not about wasting anybody's time. So if you guys want to do that, put a one in the room. What's up, Wanda eyes, eyes open wide. What does he say? Only in crazy days does a city employee pull over a city employee on the job. Yeah, why? So, so the cops are supposed to be there serving and protecting. You got a bus driver who's actually serving a whole bunch of people, and then that service <laughs> abruptly stops because a law enforcement officer got his feelings hurt. 
It's so pathetic. So pathetic. All right, let me see. How do I do this invite thing? Okay, so invite guests to the studio. Send this link to your guests. You may want to share our instructions for guests. You can have up to 10 people on the screen at once. Let's just do one at a time. Let's just do one at a time. So let me copy this link. And if you guys want to come on board, if you've got something substantive to say, okay, guys, I, I'm not just, I have limited time as it is. I'm going to put the link in the chat right here in a second, but please make sure that if I'm, I don't, I'm not here to govern what you say, but just make sure that what you're going to say is, is the, to the benefit of the masses. So here's the stream yard link right there. So let's see, how does this happen? Okay. So if you guys click on the link, does that mean I've never done this before that I have to, let's see, do you guys appear backstage? What happens? You may also want to share this guests can stream this to their own destinations as well. Hmm. So I guess I wait for somebody. What's up King Braveheart. How are you doing? You know what? If you're a troll, if you're a troll, I, I invite you to click on the link too. Go ahead. But let's let's be logical, okay? Ad hominems. I mean, if you want to launch ad hominems, go ahead because I really want you to reveal who you are. But okay, so how does this work here? Yeah, trolls are welcome too. I don't have. I don't think anybody's clicked the link yet. If you're interested in clicking the link, here's the link to join the back and uh, you know lend your voice to the to the discussion. Okay, so add to stage, Josephine is added to the stage how did i add josephine to the stage what's up josephine can you hear me oh wait yes i can hear you how you doing oh good how you doing i, I have no idea well i'm doing okay but i have no idea what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs> i think you know what you're doing no i really don't <laughs> so how you doing what you got for us Ruh -ruh. oh wait did i just mute you Oh, you got to unmute your mic. Go ahead, Josephine. Your your mic is muted. Can you hear me? For some reason, I hear an echo. Okay, yeah, I can hear you now. If you have an echo, it's probably because you're getting feedback through your speakers, and if you got earphones, it'd be good to throw those on. Hang on. All right, let's see if that solved the problem. I'm yep. not repeating. I hear you, and you're not repeating on my end. All right, cool. So, um, you have the floor a couple of weeks ago, Hudson Falls cops up here while I was shopping, stuck, um, tire flares in my rim, at least four of them in every slit of my rim. And right before I pulled out, they lit them. It really burnt up my rim pretty bad. They've been wait, trying to kill me up here. Wait, wait a second. Where wait, were you sitting? Wait, give give me the lay of the land. Where were you sitting? I was parked in the supermarket parking lot of Aldi's. Okay. I'm up here in Hudson Falls, Washington County, upstate okay. New York. Okay. I've been up here for four and a half years. When I, while I was moving up here. State Trooper Aaron Munn pulled me over on the side of the road and sexually assaulted me. I fought it in court, and the judge allowed him to get away with it. Ever since then, they have been trying to kill me. In the middle of the night, the first time in the middle of the night, they smoked out my security camera, loosened all of the lugs on both of my front tires. After that, I was at Walmart. Wait, why, wait, wait, pause for a second. I got so many questions about this. Why would they do that to you? I believe they're in fear for their freedom because of the crimes they've been committed against me. When you went to court against this cop who you say sexually assaulted you, did you have any video evidence or audio evidence or any kind of evidence against no, them? No, I didn't. He, the cop, the state trooper, Aaron DeMond, kept me on the side of the road for almost two hours almost two hours. He searched my van. I had a beautiful Honda van at the time, which the cops destroyed, even though I had it on my surveillance camera, them crashing into my van, you know, nothing was ever done about it. 
I, I am I am just speechless about that. I, yeah. I don't even know what to say, Josephine. Okay, this so corruption, let, let me interrupt. Let me back okay. up a little. This police corruption started 14 and a half years ago on Long Island, in Patchog, Long Island. They I was falsely arrested seven times on Long Island. I was physically assaulted seven times on Long Island sexually assaulted on Long Island three times and all the cops got away with everything they did. Everything they did. Every every lawyer that I had did nothing for me, threw me in front of a moving bus. Uh, I moved up here after 10 years of the bullshit. They went after my entire family, my four children, my aunt, my uncle, my two friends. On Long Island, they tried to kill me multiple times. Multiple times. They shut down Nichols Road on Long Island in both directions in the middle of afternoon. And I'm driving the first time it happened. I'm like, something's not right. There's no traffic in either direction. It's impossible. It was after 3 p.m. Everybody's getting off work and, all, and no school buses, no nothing. All of a sudden, I see two vehicles speeding down in the other direction. Now, Nichols Road is a two-lane highway. Next thing I see is the two vehicles that were speeding down in the other direction pull up next to me. And they tried to run me off the road. Now, I had WBLI, my local radio station, on. And on the radio, it comes over. Nichols Road is shut down in both directions and nobody knows why. And here I am trying to save my life because they were trying to run me off the road because I moved into a beautiful apartment. I didn't know it was a two family house. I didn't know the other three adults in the other apartment were heavy duty drug dealers. They didn't only deal marijuana, they were dealing everything. I lived three houses down from the mayor's office, mind you. Cars were lined up on both sides of the street. People come into this house to buy drugs. They kept trying to get into my house. On two occasions, a big, big guy, over six foot tall, comes into my back porch. My porch was attached to the house. And you can enter into my apartment through my porch. The first time the man came in, he's yelling out, Keith, Keith. The main drug dealer's name is Keith Gilliam. All right. And I had a friend over. Oh, let me, I, let me, let, let me just interrupt you real quick. Um, okay. So I, I want to get back to the Aldi parking lot. I'm not minimizing any of your stories here, but right. in the, you're sitting in the Aldi, Aldi parking lot and you're saying that the cops put some kind of flares in your tires and burned your tires up road flares. How do you put a flare into a tire? Can you explain that to me? Into the rim. They put it into the, the slots on the rim. Okay. And when I, while I was in the supermarket, an undercover cop came and stood right next to me in, in one of the aisles. And when I walked out of the Aldi's, there was a black SUV with a plain clothes cop sitting in it. He raises his eyebrows up and down at me and he waves to me. I ignore him because I knew who he was. And then as I'm walking to my car, I the car right next to me, it was very strange. The driver's door was wide open, but I didn't see any people around it. There was not one person anywhere. Then as I'm putting my groceries into the back seat of my car, out of the corner of my eye, I catch somebody bent down, sneaking around the front of the car parked next to me. I So I get into my car and I see this person still bent over, reach into the car next to me, take out the keys, slam the car door. Next thing I smelt was sulfur. I didn't know where the smell was coming from. So I pulled out. When I got to the first stoplight and stopped, all I saw was this thick, heavy smoke coming from my right front driver's tire. And all I could smell was rubber burning. I, I I made it home. I called an old neighbor of mine. Wait, wait, you, you you made it home with one of your tires burning? The the flares, yeah. Okay. Did you did you record did you videotape? Did you have a camera phone, I assume, right? I have I have uh 
I have a dash cam and I also have a phone in my cell phone. Okay, so you cell phone. Did, did you get a recording of all this? No, I didn't. I felt as long as I kept the cold air coming underneath the car, my tire would be okay. And I, I was lucky I did that because had I stopped, it would have definitely blew out my tire. But I made it home. And the next day, my old neighbors, she, I asked her if she could send her boyfriend over to check, check my tire, check my car. He came over the next day. He jacked it up. He got under there and he said, Josephine, road flares were put into the rim of your tire. He said, I could smell the sofa and you could see all the residue. You, I took pictures and I put the pictures all over my Facebook page. You did? Of how the rim, where the, where the flares were, you can see the rim was starting to deteriorate and melt and crack. Can, can you drop a link in the chat? I don't know how to do stuff like that. I really, I just, I'm not that computer smart at all. But uh, if, if I wasn't using Google Chrome, I'd, I'd get on Facebook and, and look it up. But hey, Josephine, I'm going to let Brick, uh, there's another guy in the in the room. I'm going to I'm going to let him speak because I, I want to give people some time. So I appreciate you sharing that with me. If you have a, my dash cam is activated, it, it's motion sensor. So if anybody ever gets around my truck or whatever, uh, it, it it films it. So does your da dash cam have that capability? I when when I get out of my vehicle i unplug the dash cam i don't leave it running oh my gosh because you know i mean the general rule is if it's not on video it didn't happen right exactly yeah so you got to get man you got to get some evidence on these people hey i'm gonna let you go josephine thanks for thanks for calling in i'm gonna we're gonna go to break right now man thank you Bye for now thanks hey brick what's up man you're up hey brian how, how you doing you hey, doing? sorry it took so long. Good, man. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, no, no problem, man. You know, uh, with Chili being uh, down in the depths of the dungeon, man, uh, and you said somebody can come on up. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and jump on that. Um, you know, I look, I look at everybody in the chat, man. I'm kind of looking through the chat, you know, and you guys are, you guys are kind of like a family for me. You know, um, I have, I have a family, but um, I look look at my american brothers and sisters and i say okay you know i see the values that we have um and if i can offer any words of encouragement um you know because this is this is a rough time and um the the folks that uh that we associate with um you know it really makes a difference for us to be be on each other's side um I wanted to be able to say a few things um, in regards to um, the 1A community. Um, you know, we, we have a bunch of people in this community. I mean, you just you just uh, pointed out that uh, the other day that um, James Freeman kind of put out a half-hearted video um, saying, I support, you know, that, that Chile shouldn't have been arrested and that sort of thing. Um, I, I can kind of accept it. Um, to me, Chili's, Chili's a friend because he's exposed so much. Um, and, and I really appreciate how much you've done as well. You know, your channels be huge, massive, um, for the 1A community, y you guys, between the two of you, um, lackluster, um, the bigger channels really, I don't see the point in this this argumentative stuff that I see between everybody, um, especially in such a dire time, you know, they're really targeting the 1A fam. And so I love to be able to see people to come together on the solutions. I've seen that some people say, I don't have solutions. That was James Freeman's response. I wanted to speak on that because I put into his comments that Chile does have solutions. He has provided some decent, viable solutions. Maybe they're not perfect, but they're better than what we have. Um, and, you know, you're, you're very good at articulating um, the principles that a human being should be treated, how they should be treated. 
Um, and so I really, really definitely respect you massively for that. Um, you know, Chile, Chile has provided some decent um, alternatives um, as opposed to the current situation, which is Terry versus Ohio. Um, and the digital detainment things and the and the other uh, things that he kind of laid out in his channel, you know, we see things like what you just spoke about today, the bus. Um, those things are all happening all of the time. And it's really related to that officer safety crap, which doesn't mean a stinking thing <laughs> because they don't have any obligation to protect us as we see with cases like Uvalde and so on and so forth. And, you know, I'm, I'm speaking on the broader spectrum, um, which, which you're able to articulate, you know, and so I really appreciate it. I, I just want to say that I want to appreciate you. I want to appreciate Chile. I also want to appreciate folks like James Freeman, everybody in the chat. We're a family. We need to come together for a solution. And I, do believe that Chile's done that. I mean, he's provided some excellent solutions. Yeah, I agree with you. And, uh, you know, I also realize that in the realm of humanity, things can get really complex, especially with relationships that were damaged by, you know, whatever, you know, and a lot of times I'm not saying in these times right here, but a lot of times somebody can perceive that damage was done when damage might not have been done as bad as it was. And then time goes by and then people tend to forget exactly what would ha what happen. And I'm not saying that's going on in this particular case, but I totally agree with you. We're in a time where they're going to try to poise CBDC, central bank digital currencies on us, crash the dollar, you know, uh, cause food, food scarcity, create more laws that make people in the one, a community, you know, classified as domestic terrorists, getting visits from the FBI and the CIA, all this stuff is going to happen more and more, and it's not going to stop unless we can all get our heads out of our derriers and unite on what the truth is and what justice is and, you know, push back. Because like you said, if we don't do that, we're pretty much doomed. Yeah. Yeah. And so in regards to that, you know, I've kind of begun a small process in my own um, spare time, free time, if you will if you'll call it, I mean, it's, it's all the time I have, you know, with the, with the life that we have, we only have so much time. And so, um, I've kind of begun a little bit of a process myself where I have begun to call around to these different agencies and I kind of have my own process and I explain to them that I'm engaged in my first amendment protected activity. And that's my right to petition my government for a redress of grievances. I tell them that I'm engaged in my first amendment right in full so that they can't come back and say, oh, he didn't tell me that he was recording. No, I told you that my 1A is in, in, in effect. And then I also tell him that I'm not going to waive any of my rights. And if you go through this little process and you tell them that, then any questions that they ask are quite inappropriate. You've, you've allowed them to understand. And if they refuse, then ultimately it's exposed, right? And so always record them. If you're if you're gonna make the calls, you know you, you mentioned you know it, it'd be it'd be all right, and I do agree it'd be all right to call these places and say, hey, I see what you did, it's wrong, and I'd like to see a change. That's what asking for a redress, petition for a redress, asking for a change. That's what it means, and so that's what one A allows us to do. Um, I know that the tyrants don't want us doing that. So they're going to try to misdirect and say, oh, you got to call IA or you got to call um, over to this department. Or no, no. You have the right to ask each and every individual one of those public servants to make a change with what with the way that they do things, whether it's policy or whatever that they got to change. But ultimately, you know, the thing about order followers, uh, you know, that that goes back to, you know, uh, 1940. One, two, three, four, five, Nazi Germany. And other countries have done it too. Um, you know, other countries, it's not just, you know, Germany. They all do it. Um, and so we're seeing that progression towards tyranny. We just kind of have to push it back and tug at the heartstrings. Talk to these people. Let them know your feelings. You, you understand that what they're doing is wrong and you do want to see the changes and if at least you can do that and make a record of it and then put it out there and that way people can see it and then make a decision based on do i want that public servant no do i want this public servant maybe we'll see how she does for a little while 
Yeah, no disagreement there, man. No disagreement there. Yeah, the, the, the recipe always works in every age at all times. Distract, deceive, divide, dehumanize, demoralize, and then conquer. So yeah, you're totally right, man. No disagreement there. Hey Brick, thanks for talking to us. I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to Kiwi right and uh, and maybe we can come bring it back around, but I, I I have limited time. I got like 15 minutes left. Yes, sir. No problem. Appreciate you, brother. Take care. Hey, what's up, Kiwi? You're on. Hey, I'm not sure if you can see me or not. I live in New Zealand. Thank you for I, calling me Kiwi. We. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see you. Let me see. Let me see. Maybe there's something I'm no, doing wrong. No, here, it doesn't matter. Um, I was looking up the population of my. Okay, you're, you're cutting out just a little bit, Kiwi. Keep talking. So the floor is all yours. Uh oh, did we lose you? Mm, Kiwi, are you there? Yeah, uh, I don't see you muted. If you guys, if anybody wants to come on to the live stream, I just put the link in the chat right there, and uh, just click on that. You'll be in the backstage, and then I'll bring you up as soon as the person who's talking gets done talking. I would like to let's keep it to like three or four minutes. Cause like I said, I only have 15 minutes and that gives us time for like maybe three or four people. So if you guys want to come on board and talk about something substantive and life changing with regard to the first amendment or the fourth amendment, you know, you have the right to be secure in your person. If you don't have the right to be secure in your person, then nobody's got the right to be secure in their person. Kiwi, uh, let me, I'll tell you what, let me remove you and then I'll add you again. How about that? Are you there, Kiwi? Wrong link. Oh, wait, really? Wrong link. Invite, copy. Oh, shoot. Okay, here's the link right there. That should work. What link was I putting out there? I have no idea. Oh, www. Oh, it was a YouTube video. It was a YouTube video link. What was it? I don't know. What's up, April? How you doing, Claudette? NorCal cop watch was assaulted, and the cops let the guy go and arrested him for pepper spraying the guy. Is that recently, Claudette? Or is that an old video? So if you guys want to come on. Oh, is the Hendry video? There you go. There's. What's up, Chuck? Hey, how's it going? How you doing? I'm great. I'm doing great. I I appreciate all that you've done to help Chile and help many other auditors. Um, you are one of the standout channels, and I appreciate it. But I do want to speak with DLZ team. I spoke to Chile three days after he was uh, arrested, and he was a mess. He was an absolute mess. Um, but one of the things that really got me was we had no way of communicating together as DLC, DLC team to try to bring um, a vision of how we can deal with the situation. This is one of the things that I've been telling him for over a year. Got to have somewhere where DLC can work out of. So it's been my goal to try to help. Um, I've been following Chile for over two years. Got to meet him uh, when he was in Ohio. And uh, he's a blessing to us all. His knowledge of the Constitution, though not 100% correct all the time, he really has made a difference in how I perceive our rights to be and um just want to see DLZ step up and try to help in these situations. Um I can be reached via email at invest in your at gmail. That's I N V E S T N Y O R at Gmail. I really want to get something done so that DLZ has a place to work from. Can you um, can you uh, type that in the chat room when you get a chance? Sure.
Yeah, you guys don't be too hard on Artie. I mean, I, I it, it became apparent where he was coming from. And uh, while I vehemently disagree with what he said, I think that it's good to have that conversation and it's good to be challenged and it's good to be to not be in your in an echo chamber. So it's good to have it's good to have an opposing view. I like that. Go ahead, Chuck. Your the floor is yours. Yeah, no, good. I, I appreciate your statement because if we cannot communicate together, we're going to stay divided, and we're already divided enough in this country. So let's get back to the Constitution and how the rule of law works, and keep moving forward. But I need the help of DLZ to help me achieve this for Chile. Okay, so you you put that in the you put that in the chat yeah, there, Chuck. I'll put it in again. Okay, yeah, just just blitz that and uh, guys. Hey, Chuck, is, do you have anything else? I don't want to cut in on you. No, 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 it's all good. I know you've you've got a busy day, but I wanted. I just appreciate you letting me come on and say my piece. Most people have never seen me before, so you know I, I'm out. I'm tired awesome. of hiding behind closed doors, doing the work, and not get. Uh, not know that people don't know who I am. I've been wearing the sweatshirt now for over a week, every day. <coughs> Chili's important. We got to do our best to get him out of jail. And hopefully he gets an early release. That's Amen. about all I have to say. Amen. I hey, would appreciate any help. Hey, I appreciate it, Chuck. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Brian, so much. Take care. Okay, guys, that's that's all I got. I'm way past my time, man. I appreciate you guys. Artie, I appreciate you coming forward. I completely disagree. I don't think, I mean, I know, I know that it is wrong to put a guy who didn't, he didn't commit a crime. No crime was committed. No person was harmed. No victim was created. No statute or ordinance or, or regulation or rule or law was broken. A uh, cop got his feelings hurt because he was called a doggy, in my opinion, you know. Uh, but I do know what's not my opinion is that a man should not be in jail. He should not be being uh, supported through tax cattle dollars and subjected to incarceration and a complete loss of freedom because a guy said he, a guy in a special costume. See, um, Badges and uniforms do not and cannot grant special rights. There is no such thing as somebody who has a higher claim over your life and property than you. If you're exercising a right, nobody has the right to infringe on your right. As long as you're not harming somebody, your freedom ends where somebody else's no, your freedom to swing your fist ends where somebody else's nose begins. And nobody who's being harmed by Chile, Chile doesn't deserve to go to jail Handry didn't deserve to go to jail. Press with rancor didn't deserve to. When you it's, when you got a power trip and authoritarian that has the power to put somebody in a cage because you disobeyed their commands, we got a serious problem that needs to be resolved because what you've created is a petri dish for the growth of domestic terrorism, and that's what we've got. I mean, civil asset for forfeiture, billions upon billions of dollars, $6.2 trillion in speeding tickets when the cops speed around us all the time. Every minute, $11,794 is generated by, by order-following revenue generators on just speeding tickets alone. $11,700 and something dollars every minute of every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Is that just... Six point. Don't you think we could do something else with that six point two billion dollars? Well, you shouldn't have been speeding, R really. Well, we tell a cop that you shouldn't have been speeding. I can do whatever I want, like that. Uh, Brianna, what's her last name? I can't remember what her last name was, but she went on that TikTok video and she goes, "I can drive ninety. You can't. Uh uh. We can do that. You can. So if you see us behind you, get the f out of the way. That's that's a travesty of justice, man. What was her last name, guys? You remember Brianna? What? Officer Brianna, whatever, from whatever police department. So, Artie, I appreciate you being on. I, you know, I don't like the banter back and forth where Artie's a bootlicker. He's bowing down to the, to his, the chains. I think, 
I think that doesn't foster further dialogue. I think that hardens people into the position that they're in. It cements them because now our side is engaging in ad hominems. Ad hominems don't work. Uh, in a sense, Artie tried to do that with bringing up Chili's past. Well, if it wasn't part of this judgment, or at least it wasn't supposed to be, or at least Ann Zimmerman didn't include that as, as what was in her purview in making the judgment, then why did Artie bring it up? I think it's being intellectually dishonest. Artie was absolutely being dishonest by bringing Ch Chili's past into this. And, and by the way, what past are we talking about? The past where he's agitating cops because they just want to be left alone to, to commit their roadside piracy. I know Artie doesn't agree with me that traffic law in every sense of the word during a traffic stop trumps constitutional law. Unbelievable. You are in, traffic law doesn't keep you safe. That cop, Officer Bork, wasn't keeping people safe because he pulled somebody over for having an expired tag. How did that keep anybody safe? It didn't. How does it keep you, anybody safe by pulling somebody over on the side of the road where now everybody's in danger, including the people going 75 miles an hour uh, on the side of the road? It puts the cop in danger. It puts the victim of the traffic code in danger because you went 15 miles an hour of the speed limit, which is something that the cops do every day. You're not necessarily putting anybody in danger by doing 10 or 15 or 20 miles an hour over the speed limit, depending on what you know we're talking about. Unbelievable, the justification a badged, power-tripping authoritarian and a black robe tyrannical judge will put in place so that they can, you know, soothe their conscience, I don't know, in exacting tyranny against you. And that's what it is. And the safety of the people will always be, always, always be the alibi of tyrants. Tyrants don't come up to you going, I'm going to exact tyranny on you. They're out there saying, I'm going to keep you safe. Hey, we got to punish this guy. It's going to keep us safe. Hey, we got to punish Chile, Chile and put him 180 days in jail because it's going to keep our officers safe. You know what Artie was saying? He was saying officer safety and, and their subjective comfort and their arbitrary edicts trump constitutionally protected rights, trumps the Bill of Rights, it trumps unalienable rights. And I completely disagree with that. Does anybody else disagree with it? And I'm not, I'm not saying this because I feel like it's going to appeal to the majority because you know what, what I just said, unbelievably, as I try to fight and you try to fight for other people's rights, there will be people who resisted the common sense stuff that I just said. If we don't have traffic law, the entire world, the, the road system, everything's going to completely fall apart. It's going to be horrible. If you're not issuing $150 tickets for people uh, who don't wear their seatbelt, everything, the, the, the whole infrastructure is going to crumble. Now, I'm, I'm being hyperbolic with that, of course. But that's how people act. If I'm not free to drive down the road in a 3,500-pound vehicle and put my life at risk by not seatbelting myself in, if I'm not free to not wear a seatbelt, I'm not free. You're not jeopardizing anybody else's life by not wearing a seatbelt, but they're going to justify, well, the reason I'm giving you this hundred, I've got to teach you a lesson and make you make sure that you, Mr. Adult will keep yourself more safe. And in order to do that, I'm going to give you this $125, $150, $50, whatever, $25 ticket. What if that family, what if that dad or that mom who failed to put on that seatbelt when he left the post office and, and pulled out into the roadway. And now he's got a 50, 150, $75 ticket. What if that was the $75 that broke the camel's back? And now you're going to economically terrorize a family and put them out of the street because you thought it'd be a good idea to force them into safety. It doesn't make any sense at all. You're not keeping anybody safe. Is it a good idea to wear your seatbelt? Yeah. Do you think you should economically terrorize and penalize somebody for not putting a seatbelt on? No, that's evil. That's evil. Nobody asked you to come into my life. It's like if there's if there's any obstruction going on, our freedom is being obstructed by the law enforcement officials. Chile was not obstructing anything. Well, I actually I take that back. Chile was obstructing. He was obstructing road piracy. And 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 kind of, he kind of wasn't either, you know, it's like he wasn't keeping the job from writing a ticket that the, the officer Bork chose to just wave her on must not have been that important.
Oh, I got bigger fish to fry. There's a guy with a camera. I gotta, I gotta put all my attention on him. Oh, he's, he's not obeying my directives. Like I think that he should. Oh my God. He called me a doggy. You get out of here, ma'am. Well, then pulling her over. Wasn't all that important then. Was it? Huh? Huh? All right, guys. I appreciate you. Thank you. Remember record the police. And then we forget to record the police, record the police and make sure your cameras are always charged. If you have a 360 camera, use it. You're going to need it. That's going to be your insurance policy. Make sure you can do everything on your side to make sure that you did what was right. And then record them doing the wrong. Okay, guys, I condemn that if Chile didn't have a camera, the officer wouldn't have said a thing. I wonder, makes me wonder, man, who said that? Michael Murphy, Michael O. Murphy. Oh, wait. <laughs> That's not what what's what new chili. Thanks, Scrubzilla. I appreciate that. I don't I, I lost it. I lost it. I'm lost it in the lights. I lost it in the lights. Mark Bear says good to see everybody here. Love you too, Brick. Yeah, I was supposed to leave 30 minutes ago. I'm in trouble. Okay, guys. I love you. I appreciate you. Remember, uh Hendry's in uh, Hendry's out of jail, but he needs your help. Uh, where is this? Henry's out of jail, but he needs your help. Black still needs your help. And Chili still needs your help. And so does Press with Ranker. Appreciate you guys. I'll see you guys in the next live stream. Take care. Be free.